As someone who's consulted on films and everything, like what do you think that they did so right about this? I mean, there's a lot wrong with it, but I love it anyway. Yeah, yes. you're smiling, you're smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Dig it, man. What do we got here? It's what we call a classic. Everyone has some kind of story like that right there. Yeah. And it's always like your favorite story to tell. Any zipline training? Actually, yes. In ranger school, you have to slide down one and yell ranger. Welcome to Black Rifle Coffee's Veterans React. I'm Richard Ryan, and today I'm joined by Greg Williams and Jericho Dimmitt. What's going on? You want to give everyone a little bit about <laughs> yeah. your uh, backstory? Yeah, so I'm the uh, currently the director of marketing for Everly Stock and Army Infantry veteran. Did a combat tour to Kandahar, Afghanistan. Jericho, sir. Jericho Dunman. Uh, 20 years in the Army. I uh, retired four years ago. I've been working in film and media ever since. And you actually brought some videos today as a suggestion that you wanted to watch because you were a little quiet in the last one, huh? Was I? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll talk some more. <laughs> Shh, I'm talking. To tell this story, I must start at the beginning. But where does it begin? Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Sweet. The Legion scenes. Maybe in June of 1954, when French group Mobile 100 moved into the same central highlands of Vietnam. Yeah, this scene is rad. It's kind of like a, like a little treat in the movie because you never see Vietnam Foreign Legion stuff. Putain d'herbe. Putain de chaleur. Putain de pays. As someone who's consulted on films and everything, like, what do you think that they did so right about this? This scene in particular? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it anyway. It is an obscure little chunk of weird history. I go there, I go there. They obviously cared about authenticity because you got all these NVA guys here. Or I don't even know if they were called the NVA in the French Indochina War, but they could have like taken the easy way out and had these guys look just like the NVA do later in the movie. But they don't. They look like the Viet Minh, which was like in the 50s fighting the French. <laughs> The French guy's camo patterns are correct, even though no one knows what that camo pattern should be. To me, this scene, this scene and this movie as a whole is just a little bit different than a lot of movies. It's not just like your Pandering. typical cliche battle scene or whatever. <laughs> they really did go into the detail of it, and it is, like you said, like an untold story. But personally, I deployed with 1st Cav Division. You know what air cavalry really means? You fly into hostile territory, outnumbered 10,000 miles from home. And it's a movie about 1st Cav. It's one of the units of 1st Cav. Sometimes the battleground's no bigger than a football field. And if the choppers stop coming, we all get slaughtered. And then you've got Sam Elliott, so he's just a badass. Everybody loves Sam Elliott. Yeah. You so. fucking weatherman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, here we yeah. go. This, yeah, is, yeah. this is the scene. Yep. Love it. That's actually Marty Scovland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And these guys are just like, nah, bro, I'm good with it. Good morning, Sergeant Major. How do you know what kind of goddamn day it is? One of the few without a mustache here, too. Beautiful morning, Sergeant Major. Are you a fucking weatherman now? Yeah, this is like another thing that shows those little details. The black and white name and the black and yellow U.S. Army. It's like a tiny little thing that makes, you know, a lot of difference when they start to add up. The other funny thing about it for me is like, I don't care if you were conventional, soft, it does not matter. Everyone has some kind of story like that right there with some E8, E9 just being a dick to be a dick. <laughs> That's a nice day, Sergeant Savage. Yeah. And it's always like your favorite story to tell. It's always fun watching this movie too because it was filmed on Fort Benning. Oh really? So like, yeah, it? yeah, it was filmed on Fort Benning. Know. It had DOD support and stuff. So like these are like hangars on Lawson Army Airfield. When you go to jump school, you like rig up in this building. At ease, gentlemen. 
Welcome to the new cavalry. So it's, it's fun to see the, the sets that are supposed to be certain things, but you know what it, what it actually is. We will ride into battle, and this will be our horse. This is where he's the, he's the commander meeting, meeting is, yeah. All his, mind. all yep, his O's, right. yeah. You don't have to catch it, you don't have to feed it. My dad was uh, in first cab in Vietnam. Oh, no shit, really? So my dad is a fellow first cab combat veteran. Right. He's super proud of that. This scene, he's like saying, we're from the Airborne, where the officer's always the first one out of the plane. Sergeant Major Plumley and I come from the paratroopers, where the officer is always the first one out of the plane. Which is funny, because it really isn't that way anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, I hope you gentlemen like training, because me and the Sergeant Major, we love it. Like, where are they at in the war right now? So this part is... Pretty good, huh? This is when they're kind of like innovating the concept of air assault with rotary wing assets. There's only one thing wrong. Let's go, let's go. All right, your officer's dead. What do you do? What do you do? It's the first time it was used, you know, as an assault element in combat. They used helicopters in Korea, but for like medevac and stuff like that. So at this point in the movie, they're just figuring it out. They're c developing all their TTPs and stuff for, mm. for Vietnam. Before that day, the soldiers of North Vietnam and those of America never met each other in a major battle. Something about those Hueys in formation like that is just so fucking cool. I tell people all the time, the first time I got on a Chinook in Afghanistan, we're going from Kandahar up to Terracot, sitting at the back of the bird, and like I could not help but have Fortunate Son just start playing in my head, you know? <laughs> just like from all the Vietnam like helicopter scenes I'd seen in movies over the years. This is rad. Right? Two miles out, dropping a nap in the earth. Like I said, my dad was a, he was a door gunner in the first cab. Really? And he watched it, he's like, yeah, this, this checks out. Like the nap of the earth they're doing here. <laughs> Below treetop level, like the pilots were just out of control. Studs. That's yeah. Terrible. They want to fly with you for some reason. I guess it's because they think you're the best. It's because I only recruit the dumb ones, sir. <laughs> With the technology they had in the 60s. Yeah, that was like flying a 57 Chevy. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> we got the broken arrow scene here, right? Broken arrow! Broken arrow! Yep, I think so. Broken arrow? That means that an American has been overrun, causing every combat aircraft for support. My God. Pretty legit. <laughs> Getting that 1911 out. Yep. Sir! Roger that! It's been incredible for me, like as the war has, you know, obviously, I say winded down, it's changed. The direct action in Afghanistan and Iraq has, wind, has wound down and guys have gotten out and have started to, you know, like tell their story and stuff. Like hearing how many times shit like this, not this exact scene, obviously. Stick to us on our position! At one, five, zero! But shit like this really did happen. I'd never experienced something where I was like, oh my God, we gotta bring in the hand of God to get out of this. You know, I know like the first time we took contact being like, holy shit. I can't imagine being in that situation where you're like, oh my God, I need anything and everything I've got or we're not gonna get out of here. You're still young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can go back in. God forbid. Moving along here a little bit. Yeah, yes. you're smiling, you're smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Dig it, man. What do we got here? It's what we call a classic. Have the prisoners fall in. Sir? Prisoners, fall in! I haven't even seen this. Oh, wow. Yeah, Tito. Yeah. So it's the Dirty Dozen. That's Lee Marvin, who's actually a Marine vet. Uh, that's John Cassavetes. He went on to be a, a really awesome 
director. And there's nothing you can do about it, mister. So it's like a fictional story based on a true story of, we basically have this suicide mission, so we gotta grab a team of dudes who, I think all these guys are condemned men, so they've all been uh, sentenced to death. Death by hanging, death by hanging, death by hanging, death by hanging, death by hanging. Or life in prison. 30 years hard labor, 30 years imprisonment, 30 years hard labor, 20 years hard labor, 20 years imprisonment, 20 years hard labor, 20 years hard labor. Lee Marvin comes out, he's like a commando guy, and he's like, Temporarily, I got a little pull around here. You guys can go on this mission and maybe die, or but if you but if you live, I might be able to get you off the hook. Your sentence is expunged, or whatever they call it. What was that talk down there? Nothing, sir. Come here, soldier. Okay, so what we have here is the classic conventional guys hating on soft guys. <laughs> You're filthy. Grace to the uniform. It's like a little prelude to Black Hawk Down, right? Yeah, there's only five stories. Everybody's just telling them different. <laughs> <laughs> this man is now going to demonstrate the proper procedure for shaving and bathing in the field. Victor Franco, why he hasn't shaved? Right, soldier. No, sir! Jim Brown's like, you tell him. Dry shave him. No! <laughs> This checks out, you know. Yeah, why not? It's an excellent firing stance. Yeah, it is. Is that a grease gun? That's right! Oh, yeah. You'd be good enough to have your men dispose of their weapons. Sergeant Barron! Sir! Get some special help and get those weapons! One of the best sickle kit rate firearms of all time. Yes, sir! Have you ever shot a grease gun? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Th 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 <laughs> <laughs> now, this guy was manufactured in World War II to replace the Thompson submachine gun. Come on. <laughs> Taping mags together before it was cool. Yeah. You must be out of your mind. It might seem that way. This is a funny thing you always see in movies, though. It's like, this is World War II. That full bird colonel, is, he's probably like 25 or 30, maybe. You yeah. know what I mean? But like they're like, oh, it's the colonel. Like He's the head guy. We got to make him an old guy. <laughs> when I first, obviously first got in at basic and finding out that like the drills were 24, 25 years old, and I remember being 18 thinking like, yeah, that's a grown ass man, like that's an adult. <laughs> I'm sitting here now in my mid 20s and I'm like, I was a fucking kid, like that's crazy, man. Like I still don't know how to do my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, was it train people? How do you do land now? Like, get the fuck out of here. That I'd like to see. So would I. Yeah, this is the part they're basically <laughs> yeah. doing like war games. I think that guy was like their observer controller. Sir, will you explain the rules to him? Well, I'm just an observer, Captain, not an umpire. I can't interfere or make any rulings. Ditch that guy. We got its shit to do. Why do we put him Put him there. Oh, the men can stay, but keep out of the way. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Speaking of old man River, Bronson, like 18 years old, looked like he was in his 60s. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, because he is super young here. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah. But he looks like he's seen some stuff. They're holding the colonel at knife point now? Yeah, they just took the command posts. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's really funny. Because up until now, it's all been a game. But as of tomorrow night, it's going to be the real thing. And if you want to know how real, I'll tell you. One regret I do have for my military career is that I never got to do a raid on a French chateau. I'm sure you could find somebody to help facilitate that. There's probably some shady characters hanging out at a French <laughs> chateau somewhere <laughs> that need to be raided. <laughs> Killing Nazis, baby. Yep. <laughs> Looking sharp doing it, too. <laughs> Banking them in, Kobe and them. Funny thing about this movie too is this guy. Hey, you were just an MP guarding these guys. You keep your big mouth shut. But now you're like a commando, so yeah. come along with us. <laughs> I think they've rounded everybody up and put them in the bomb shelter or the basement. <laughs> now they're trying to figure out a way to kill all these dudes that ran into the basement. So you didn't think about that, did you? They gotta breathe, don't they? Whilst fighting off the counterattack. 
Are they all rocking grease guns? It That's looks like it. Everybody? Yeah. Why wouldn't you want a hip-fired, slow cycle rate machine right. gun? Yeah. You know, so why give them anything else? Oh, Pretty this much guy's your, got something cool. your standard yeah, chateau out. weapon. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. I love that he had time to, yeah. to grab the, the bullet that just hit him in the face. Think about the fact that he was dying before he died. There's always the comeback alive guy too. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, you can't just you can't just get out clean. Somebody's got to come back to life. Thirty cal, doing right. work. Let that pig eat. Like that was a very poorly built wall. Yeah, that's good. So, <laughs> <it's a bottom. laughs> Does anybody know what that is? Is that a real thing? It's not a real thing. Okay. I don't think. Look, I'm not a historian by any means, but that does not look like something we used. All right, roll it! Remember Jefferson, 20 seconds. Gotta have Jim Brown show off his football right. skills. Run! Faster, faster, come on, hang on! Dip, dodge, duck, and dive. Come on, Jefferson! Right in the hip. Dipped when you should have dodged. Yeah. Oh, those were grenades. Yep. Really? Yep. Do you have those kind? We're not supposed to talk about this. You can edit that out, right? That yeah. I even acknowledge that there might be a grenade like that. Yeah. <laughs> this is a hijack! Let's go! Let's go! Hell yeah. The Delta Force. Delta sir. Force. I like the attire that the terrorist picked for his big hijacking. Yeah. Right? He's like, I want to look like Tony Montana from uh, Scarface. Scarface. Okay, fuck you. How's that? Fuck you, fuck you. I mean, he knew it's gonna make the news. Do not provoke me. Talk it. Come. We will cooperate. Close shave, yeah. You gotta look good. We cooperate, man. We do anything you want. Open the cockpit. Do the secret knock. Yeah. Jim, it's me. Open. She's like, hey, fuckers, there's a gun in my face out here. Everything's all right. Open, please. You got a 1911? Though? Yeah. Thinking of all the guns that have, like, Stood the test of time, though. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that heyday of like the early 1900s with Browning in 1919. Yeah, like it's crazy. 1911. You nail it. You nail it. This shows what a movie weirdo I am. I just put something together. The pilot here in this movie is the bar owner in Heartbreak Ridge. What are you, some kind of smart man? Awesome movie. This doesn't mean we're gonna be swapping spit in the shower. That's very obscure. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your new captain speaking. Your name what is Cole. You can come immediately to first class captain. Why is he singling me out? I am not Jewish. I'm an American. I came from Russia, but now I live in America. I am Christian Orthodox. Ask them. You know what? He was in Dirty Dozen too. He was the the OC that was like cracking up when they uh, really? achieved their mission. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, yes, I, I suppose it could. Same guy, look at this. Look at that. You call for all the Jews. I'm Jewish, just like Jesus Christ. You take one of us, you gotta take us all. I always like to wear a black watch cap when I'm in a Middle Eastern country. <laughs> it's not probably 100 degrees here. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what happens. You can't touch this, it's perfect. But yeah. when they put the, all the squibs on the side of that Jeep and it's like they're getting shot from directly across or from below when you look at how the skib strikes look, but they're getting shot at from above. Oh, just those, yeah. It's just those little things that add up to create a perfect movie. 
Okay, thanks. Bye. Deuces. Get your patches on. We move out in two minutes. Always need that rope. Mm. Can't go anywhere without a rope. Rope and grappling hook. <laughs> How many times have you used a grappling hook? So, I'll age myself here a little bit. When I went to basic training, we were taught how to use a rope and a grappling hook to like get in windows. Idiot. Really? I was, yeah. actually, not, I, I was actually not surprised by that answer. What, because he's old? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking old compared to me. <laughs> 27. And I remember doing it like in basic training being like, I don't care what you do, make it fast. If there's a guy in there, can you just like totally just poke <laughs> his head out and shoot the fuck out of me? <laughs> or just wait till you're halfway up the rope and go, nope. <laughs> Wow. It's pretty much the coolest thing I've ever seen. Any zipline training? Actually, yes. Yeah. In ranger school, you have to slide down one and yell ranger, or else how are you going to lead people in combat if you can't do that? <laughs> Better hurry, Nick. I think this heavy reinforcement's a lot. How do you know? Something I heard in the radio room. <laughs> what, him sweeping? Better hurry, Nick. I think this heavy reinforcement's a lot. How do you know? He just sweeping him, finger on the trigger. This is my safety. <laughs> Come on, keep it moving. Keep it moving, let's go. Move. <laughs> Just sweeping all the hostages. Do you have a password? <laughs> all right, if you want to live, then use it. Follow me to trip and follow him. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. oh. Right to the dome. These guys are like, well, we'll get a chance to use these ropes. Don't worry. Good morning, gentlemen. Wake up, you shitbags. It's about time. You got enough fuel? For what? To fly to Israel. You bet. All right, Jim, bring them in, bring them in. Oh, the missile motorcycles. Yeah. yeah. Where did these come from? The rocket dirt bikes? And the Jeeps and the dune buggies. Like, where'd they get these? We're landing in Algiers. Repair your gear. Do a wheelie, do a wheelie. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna see him shoot. And then do a wheelie <laughs> in celebration. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Ah. Is that like a mortar motorcycle? <laughs> it's just like low velocity mortars. Well, come on, get a rope down to him. He's literally just showing off at this point. Oh, the rope's out. Nice, we got to use the rope. Happy. Is just slowing the plane down not an option? Yeah. yeah. Now do Surf. a willy. Yes! Come on, do a willy. that not cheating using his feet yeah no leg no legs none of that crossfit pull up trash we got you, don't worry. Pull, pull. you have to be in shape if you want to be in the delta force obviously. that's what i hear Come on, let's go boost this burden let's get out of here i don't know that we have enough room i'm wondering why they don't just have chuck fly the plane <laughs> appreciate you stopping by greg yeah, Jericho. You that was awesome so where can people find you? What you got going on? I mean, you can find me on Instagram. Not a big following whatsoever. Uh, oh, come more, on. You're more welcome to. More likely, though, you're going to find me on the cover of, like, the Everly Stock catalog or something like that. So check out Everly Stock. Oh, shit, Stock. we got a model in our Not presence. Me. Yeah. You are a good-looking man. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. A little close to be saying that, but I'll take it. <laughs> Jericho, where can people find you? I am Laid Back Berserker on the gram. At on the laid, gram? At Laid Back Berserker. At Laid Back Berserker. In your... Officially part of the Black Rifle family now. I am, yeah. So you can find me working for Black Rifle Coffee. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Let us know. If there's anything else that you guys might want us to watch at some point, any guests that you might recommend, um, or Jericho again. See you guys next time.